Fantastic, everyone. In today's lecture, we'll be covering gravitational forces and centripetal forces. Now, a great application of this is the uh, classic gravitron, or the tilt-a-hurl, or the vomit comet, or whatever else you may want to call it. But we've all been on one, and when it starts spinning up, you know, you stick to the side of the wall, and that's because of acceleration forces exerted on your body. Now, these forces are very similar to gravity because gravity keeps you down on the ground, but in the case of the tilt-a-hurl, the gravity is directed, or the acceleration more appropriately, because gravity is an acceleration, is directed towards the center of the tilt-a-hurl. And that's why, when you're sitting in one, you stick to the walls. Now, an interesting application of acceleration in a tilt-a-hurl is if you were to vomit in a tilt-a-hurl, where would the vomit go? I mean, we've all thought about this and we've all had nightmares about it. <laughs> it's, um, so imagine if you have a tilt-a-hurl here. There's your center point and Joe Schmo is here and I don't know, enter generic name there, Bob. So let's just say the tilt-a-hurl is turning that way and Joe Schmo were to vomit. Now, the vomit would exit his mouth with an initial velocity. Let's just say that's the vomit. But immediately once it leaves his body and it floats in the air, it's not affected by the, uh, the system, assuming air flowing inside the uh, drum is n uh, not important. So what we can assume is if it's spinning this way, the vomit will then promptly either land on generic individual one or generic individual two or you know, potentially farther along the uh, spinning vomit blender at this point. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's about it with the gravitron and centripetal acceleration and forces. Many thank yous.